Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. You know, this box that we're about to unbox, it says everything. It says that this is iOS and Android supported, Bluetooth, 24 hour by seven day a week, real time something. We're gonna learn what that is. It uses the iBand app and you can scan that barcode to get it if you'd like. And this is it, a smart band. Now, I don't have a model number on this, so we are going to call it the Tom Top Ultra Thin Fitness Band. Why? Because our friends over at Tom Top sent this to us, and this is it. And it is super thin. It's really sweet, and um, it does a lot of good stuff. Check it out. Here's the overall specs. They've uh, thrown every um, imaginable keyword in the title, so it'll come up on everybody's uh, scan and search. It's a health monitor, an activity tracker, a notifications reminder with touch screen. What else could you want? A very attractive, lots of different colors, small battery, but it gives you uh, five to seven days of operating. It's fully waterproof, IP67. You can swim with this one, and you'll tell because of the way the bands are. They're not leather. You can get them wet. Let's open the box. Check inside. Here it is. Cute little chiclet in here. Mm-hmm. Well, we can pop this open. Slide this through. Yeah. Yeah, and here it is, here it is. Look at this. Now, ladies, ladies, I'm telling you, now we finally have a thin band watch. Look at this one. I think you're going to be happy with wearing this particular watch. Look at this. Solid metal design, fully curved, fully thin easy to operate it's gonna look lost on my arm really look at this whoa grab the other side give you an idea it tells you right there that to turn it on you just press press and hold and it says hello in tiny little writing and boom you're up you're up with the time now you notice there's something missing from the box the charger yeah, it's not the removable kind you plug in the wall. I've tricked you with that before. It really does have a charger. I just left it in the corner <laughs> when I started the review and packed it back up. I'll go get it in a minute and show it to you, silly me. Anyway, the bands look like they're definitely removable, and you can get them in a whole variety of colors, your own if you choose. It's a sweet band. We'll look at it in a minute after we pull out the English and Chinese manual. The instruction book of smart bracelets. Okay, let's look at it. Uh -huh. As usual, small print that I can't read through my uh, camera, but you should be able to read on your big computer or TV, whatever you're watching this on, right? Here's uh, some more information. Looks like it's giving you all the information about different kinds of sports that you can do. Heart rate. Um, it does sleep time, it looks like. Yeah. Mm hmm more things with when you're tethered that you can find your phone and set alarms and information wow nice color um, manual too more screenshots for you information from the app and that looks like that's it there's the last page here it is it's not really a clip after all it's a little magnetic coupler with just two pins on it that attaches snugly to the back really strong can easily hold it ah, if it sounds like i'm out of breath i am i ran outside i had to take the band and the uh <laughs> the phone with the tethering app the iband tethering app so that i could get them connected because wow that's really bright i have no idea what um i'm what i'm looking at in terms of the name or uh, model number and I had too much clutter in this whole environment anyway it's called the N109 that's what you're gonna tether with okay we have it already bound together and we'll be back to the app in a second once we walk through this let's remove the little protective covering and let's push all this stuff away so it's the TomTop MN N109 we're looking at 
It looks like it's already got the twist to light up the screen. It's in 24 hour mode. I did 111 steps doing all of that. We have a training mode, heart rate, sleep time. Uh, looks like a alarms. Find your phone. What happens when we do that? Since it's tethered, it should. Ah, it says a device is searching for your phone and it's vibrating. And I imagine if I had the audio on, you'd be hearing it too. But I run my phones in silent mode, as you've heard the quirks around here from time to time. And info. Info, when you press and hold, it tells you the QR code that you scan to download the app that we already have installed that you can download from the Google Play Store directly. Ooh, look at that. What is that? Connect. Huh. Okay, well, there's another QR code for you. And then here's the specifics about this watch. Mm-hmm, there we go. There's our model number. There's our version number. And return. Press and hold. We're back to info. And we could turn the band off. So those are the things you cycle through. Press and hold on the watch face, and you get an alternative watch face. Try it again, and you flip back to the original. All right. In here, we press and hold. We can go into running, biking, and that's it. Return. And that gives you like a, a timed uh, event thing. Right here, when you're in the heart rate, press and hold, and you can activate it. And it should begin flashing when you make contact. Oh, look at that. It said X. It wasn't strong enough because I didn't have it on me. That's good to see that it won't take false readings. I'm going to press and hold with my finger there. Give it a chance to actually connect with my rapidly pulsing uh, capillaries and give us a heart rate. 75. Okay. Look at that. Blood pressure as well. And... Blood oxygen. Wow. All of that really quickly. And look, it's changing. Uh-huh. Now, we found out this morning, this morning for you, probably a week ago for, uh, for me anyway, for a week ago for you. Anyway, I did a, um, a blood pressure calibration thing on uh, one of the bands. And I found out that I typically run 125 over 75. And I've been notoriously getting readings around 110 over 70-ish. So I'm a little low on the systolic on almost all of these PPG things, uh, which means two things. One, it's incorrect there. It just vibrated. It's incorrect in the data it gives me. Or two, uh, just somehow because of how it works with me, I'm notoriously low. And if I add... 15 or 20 points to the numbers that it's giving me that may put me in the um, in the category of what's actually accurate for me. So that's a way you can work with these things instead of just taking the numbers uh, as, as gospel or rejecting them totally. You can do an analysis once you know what your baseline uh, blood pressure is and see if it's off by a delta amount in a specific direction. For me, they all seem to be a little on the low side um, and, and just compensate for it. Okay, let's look at the app. So I just got it, just unwrapped it. So we're going to look at the app, but it's not going to be populated with a lot of data. Uh, we can come back here to my 111 steps that you saw, and this is the opening page. You can see it's got some dots down here for other pages. So this is the step count page. Come over here and there's the sleep, which would show you, I imagine, a graph when you fell asleep, when you woke up and your awakening, awakening duration uh, of, of your overall sleep information. Then you get to your heart rate, which it does have uh, the number from when I just did it the first time. And I could measure directly here. It's got a chart. It's going to give you your average minimum and maximum. Then you have the same thing for blood pressure. There's the 110 over 70 reading that I got. I'm normally 125, let's say. So if I just add 15 and 5, that puts me right where I should be. I'll have to test it to see if that really happens. When my overall true blood pressure is up, is it giving me the same kind of numbers on here? All these are things we don't know. It takes a long time to test that, and it's variable by person. There was even one, if you remember, an app tied to a band that gave you skin color that you could check 
one of a variety from very light to very, very dark to try to match the skin colors so the diodes would even get a more accurate reading. Everybody's taking a different approach. Then the last one is blood oxygen. And here's the um, data over time from when it began and when it ended in that little test that it just did. Same here and uh, same here. So while we were talking, while I had my finger on it, while I was doing a live test, it was accumulating all of that data until it vibrated and it was done. Now, if I am to push measure here, it's gonna light it back up again and it's gonna, I'm pretty sure, be measuring all of these categories a second time. So that's how you get a sudden real-time measurement across the board of all three parameters. Very nice when an app does that. When you touch up here, we get into another whole category. There's the device and device management, which is just where we can unbind it if we want to. Here is our user information. Straight out of the box, you can adjust all of that. That helps in calculating your, um, your distance travel by your height and your calories burned by your weight and age. When you look at the uh, information for your step count, you've got the remote ca uh, camera find your watch and different reminders. We saw that. You can tie it into We Run, it looks like. Smart screen is where you have the twist to see the screen capability. What it doesn't have that some of the other apps have that's nice is the ability to turn that off during certain sleep hours. But you can remember manually to come in here, turn that off, hit the save, saves it over there, and now it's not going to turn on at night. And as long as you don't accidentally hit the bottom of it, you're not going to actually have it light up on you. Just have to remember to do it manually. That's the smart screen. The overall brightness is where we can adjust low, medium, or high. And it's pretty bright. It's pretty bright. Normally, there's the, the low, and it's really low. That's good night level. That's average. Yeah, yeah, I can see differences in that, and definitely high for when you're outside. And it's real time. It works great. Unit settings. We're in metric. I'm in the USA, so we're switched to Imperial. And your time format, it's in 24 hour right now, and I can switch it to 12 hour and save, and it immediately switches. Very, very nice. Your overall goal setting steps and your sleep time desired, an automatic measurement of your heart rate. Here's where that 24 seven they were talking about comes in. You can have an interval as low as 5, 15, 30, 60, 90, 120. I'll go with five minutes, say yes. And I presume, oh, there's the save. It's hidden underneath here. Save, successful. We saw this feature on another band, but it wouldn't save because the band didn't support it. But this one does. And now, every five minutes, I'm going to have uh, an automatic measurement of my heart rate taken. Clear it, restore it, and the ultimate about, and you could check for updates. There's the version on the uh, app and the version in the device, and it is currently the latest version, version 2.0.1. Are we whipping through these reviews or what? Cool, that's all in the settings. That all was accessible from up here. And that's everything. You now know how to use the app, how to use the watch, the fact that it's really thin, really nicely designed, definitely works for ladies, it's waterproof, and it's available from TomTop. Check the show notes down below. Got a buying link there for you. This is a good one. Uh, just be sure you check the calibration of your own particular biometrics, especially blood pressure against the numbers that you get on this to make sure that you're in the zone you think you're in when you get a reading from it. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Thanks for your subscription. We will see you again soon with more goodies. Take care.